Hello everyone, welcome to RS Craftworks. I'm just in the middle of a project here. Unfortunately, I've got to start, uh, stop, start filming until now. So I've already pretty much gotten on board and gotten started. Uh, and my phone is falling down slowly to reveal the project. Um, interesting how that turned out. Um, yeah, so let me give you a close up and I'll show you what I've done. Hiya. Yeah. So, I've already cut out the big RS, as you can see here. Big RS is pretty easy to do, but to do it, I did the similar thing I'm doing here. Did the, 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 I cannot word correctly today. Um, it'd be nice if I actually pointed at the project. But here you go, so I've drilled various holes. This one I've done a, an awful lot more holes because it's quite intricate cutting to be doing on this one. This is my handwriting that I've sort of diddled with a bit to make it look a bit more stylistic. But this one, very simple. I just drilled very big holes, enough to fit a jigsaw blade in there, and I jigsawed this out. Used my um, coarse rasps to smoothen, smoothen the curves out to make it look sort of even. And now this one's gonna be a challenge because I've got very, very small, intricate design to cut out. I do not have a scroll saw. I do not have a wider, uh, I mean, my coping saw is not that why that it will fit over this board and cut into that so i'm gonna to have to get creative with this uh likely i'll probably just um my hair is out of control likely just use a dremel tool to dremel it out cold morning here in the shed this morning but on with the project basically i've managed to cut out the craftworks um section here i ended up uh what i did to cut all of these designs out is I drilled holes in the design, drew it out first, drilled holes in the design so I could fit my jigsaw into the slots so I could cut them out with the jigsaw. Now these smaller, more intricate uh, lines, obviously it didn't go to plan everywhere. There are some bits where they chipped out because this is plywood at the end of the day. Um, I drilled many holes, more holes more frequently around the design. And then I used a, I've got a Dremel tool here. Dremel tool, it came with this very long, what looks to be a spiral down cut or up cut bit. And I just used that to connect the holes because the jigsaw blade is basically a very, it's a thick blade, but it's a blade. So you make a slot, as long as the blade fits in there, you can cut it out of the jigsaw very gently. So that's how I managed to cut out the designs in the middle of this huge board. But the next step for me is to experiment with this um, culturehustle.com black 2.0 and black 3.0. So let's get a bit mad for this, shall we? So first coat is on and well, you can obviously see there it is reflecting light, but then the light's right there and it's quite bright. But this is only um, black, black 2.0 by Stuart Semple of um, culturehustle.com. Now this is the first iteration of his blackest black paint. And it's supposed to, this one's supposed to only uh, reflect 96% only. But it does look very odd on video, doesn't it? When you take it, obviously this one, you got light bouncing onto the surface straight into the camera. So it does reflect a bit more. But when you actually look at it on the video, I was watching the time-lapse, obviously. It looks very odd, doesn't it? It just looks like I've made a black hole out of nowhere. And that's not even the, the blackest black. I've got 3.0, which is even darker than this. This looks gray compared to that. So some fascinating stuff. And when you actually, cause I did use the black 3.0 for the grid system here, as you can see right behind me. And even that in this angle, you see sort of a diagonal where the shadow is and the light. And even then they look exactly the same shade. It's very odd, very, very odd. 
But when you paint a whole surface like this, hoping it looks interesting and with LEDs behind it, you know, maybe it will look even more interesting. So let's see how this turns out once it's all done. I uh, just got several more coats to put. All right, so just to give you a view of what two coats look like. Holding this for is actually more difficult than I thought. This is what it currently looks like, if I can get it straight. Even coat. I've even gone inside and done the sides of the walls of the letters as well, because I want this to look as dark as possible to see if it makes an interesting effect. And that is what it currently looks like. Now I've got, that's coated in this 2.0, black 2.0. And now I've got black 3.0, which is the next step up. painting this board in black 3.0. I've also done another board in black 2.0, just to show a difference on video. It's quite, it's actually quite a massive difference when you look at it. See, this is very extremely dark and that looks gray in comparison. And that is very dark stuff when you compare it to other black things. Like, I actually have nothing nearby. The only thing I've got is the actual packaging of black 2.0, 3.0. You can see those two are fairly similar, but this is glossy, so you can see it reflecting the light. But that's still grey in comparison. It's very odd stuff. Very odd stuff indeed. But that's not the only funky stuff that Culture Hustle does. They're getting stranger. Stuart Semple's quite a character. He recently just um, released a palette of bland colours. I won't mention the name, you'll have to look at that up yourself. Just because it is... Mm, is it offensive? Whoever is being offended will be offended. Let's just say it that way. But um, here's some other fascinating stuff that he has. Now this stuff, you can actually see it's slightly glowing. And I haven't even charged it this well. This stuff is called Lit, Glow in the Dark Pigment. Now this stuff is powerfully glowy, if that's even the way to describe it. Basically, if you shine a, a strong enough LED on that for a couple of seconds, this thing will glow in the dark not just, this will glow in the light as well. This stuff is very strong. And I've seen plenty of people have done this. People mix this with black 3.0 or black 2.0, paint it on the surface of one of their projects. You shine lights on it. You can do some glow in the dark writing. It's really cool. And I really want to do that for my sign. So that is what I'll be doing. I'll be putting some lint pigment in some black paint and painting it over the uh, surface. So I'll get that done and we will see the, what the end result is once I'm done with this project. But for now, let's just carry on with um, getting this together and maybe doing some wiring. Hello everyone. We are getting on with the wiring portion of this uh, light up sign. Hopefully it works. This is all just me experimenting and having fun here. Uh, will I be having fun if it fails? Who knows, we'll figure it out. But I'll be going through the components and uh, bits and pieces here. Got an old USB wire, which I have butchered butchered is the word here and each USB cable as I understand it have four cables in it so you can see there red black white green red and a black are basically your power your power and earth so these are the main two wires that I'll be using because all I want is power for these lights because I'm doing an LED strip basically and uh, the green and the white wires as I understand it are data lines so this is what your software for the phone, for example, software for phones and computers used to communicate to each other and to show basically this is where like your music and everything's transferred and all that type of stuff. Uh, too complicated, won't be dealing with any of that until I become a genius, which will take several centuries. For now, I'm just dealing with the power in the earth. So that is the power in the earth. I bought these rocker switches, possibly the very wrong switch to be using for something like this, but Hey, what am I doing? Just having fun here. 
so this is the switch I'll be using. The YouTube tutorial that I followed uh, basically recommended on a big parallel wire strip of LEDs, if I'm understanding it correctly. He used 120K resistors and he attached one on the positive and the other side of the circuit, just one and the end of each uh, line of uh, LEDs. So that's what I'm gonna give a try. And if it works, it works great. If it doesn't, I'll see what um, went wrong and hopefully learn how electricity works. But basically, yeah, I'm doing a bunch of LEDs. So I've got a bunch of these LED bulbs advertised as flickering bulbs. Don't know if they actually will or not. Find out when they actually get powered up. Uh, you can always test these with these little disc um, batteries just touching them together, but I can't be bothered to find one. So we'll just deal with that as it is. So I, uh, these are blue ones that I've got out of the packet. I've got red, I've got yellow, I've got orange, and I've got white. I was going for a fire effect, really, was the idea in the past. I had a fire design in my board, but for now it's just RS Craftworks. If I want to add more, I can always add more later. So. But it should look pretty, hopefully, if I do everything correctly. And I've got a bunch of wire that I bought off the internet just to use for the wiring. And that's the idea. So hopefully this will work out. If it doesn't work out, I'll let you know and I'll see what problems come up in the meantime. But this is just me having fun, guys. There's definitely other people who are more qualified to show you how to do this type of stuff. So this is just me showing you how I go about it. So let's see how it works. It's a little too late for Christmas decorations. Hi all. Unfortunately, I skipped a lot of this because I was testing everything and set up in the shed right now. I promise I will improve the setup, but for now, this will have to do. This is my wiring. So basically, all I did, got a bunch of these flickering, these are called flickering LED bulbs. So they flicker like a flame. Uh, that's the idea at least. And all I did was I wired them, every single one of them in parallel. Now there are 32 LED bulbs. They are of different sizes, which is not recommended, but I tried it anyway, just to see how it goes. And it's all wired in parallel. So they just go all along that trail in parallel. So you've got a positive line, which I used red for, and a black line, which is the earth. And they're all just simply wired in parallel, connected to a USB cable. I had to get a new one because the other one I had was um, busted. But I just connected the red wire to the red wire of the USB cable and the black wire to the black wire of the USB cable. The other three wires, this one had five um, cables in them. A bear, a green and a white, they're just floating freely. Quite frankly, I should be isolating them so they don't short out but uh, that's how it is. Now, I'm gonna somehow plug this in to my power pack, which I have here, one-handed, which is gonna be fun. Yeah, bear with me, I am not good at this. The temptation to get my hand. Give me two seconds. And we're back. And you can see it's lighting up. It looks quite bright on camera, actually. It doesn't look that bright in real life. All I did was I just plugged it into a, a power pack. There are no resistors in this. So when I put resistors in there, because they always recommend when you look online on how LEDs work, you need to put a resistance in there. But when I did that, half of them didn't work. And now that I, like when I first used it, this white one never came on. But then when I put the per, plugged it into the power pack, they all light up and they all light up brightly and they don't burn themselves out. Obviously I don't leave them on for very long, but it works. And it works for my purposes at the moment. So give me another second, I will show you with the um, front on. And there we have it, RS Craftworks. Now I do need to fiddle with where the LEDs go off in the end here so that you can actually see the K and the S. But um, there it is, a light up sign using the black 3.0, it does look very odd. Now I've got very bright LED ring light shining directly on it. So obviously it will reflect a little bit, but it's even then compared to, I don't know, what else do I have that's bright? The handle of that screwdriver, you can see the difference, like that shines instantly. And that does not, it just looks so odd. And I'm hoping it'll be an interesting visual when I eventually get my camera set up and everything in here set up correctly so I can actually take professional videos. 
but um, it'll do for now. It's kind of like a bar, so anybody up for a pint? Anyway, that'll do for this project. I've got to get on with the rest of this shed and make it look somewhat um, presentable. So um, take care, everybody. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy if you're enjoying the videos or if you've enjoyed this one. Uh, let us know if there's any um, suggestion for improving this because I I've already come up with a couple of bad ideas. Also, anybody willing to teach an idiot English would be appreciated as well. Uh, take care, everybody, and um, stay set. Go story time with messy hair. Uh, just wanted to let you know, because I completely forgot to intru um, introduce, included in the final video, but the lit stuff uh, works. Oh, wow, it really does. This stuff is bright. I, You can see, all I'm doing is put a torch right up to it, and that thing just glows. Right, that's... I need to do some research because I want to see if UV light affects this a bit more than simple white light. But cool, look at that. Anyway, just wanted to include that in the video. Okay, see you in the next one.